Hi, my name is Solomon, and today I will walk you through how to work with your arm in Gazebo. There are two types of ways you can do this. In the first part of the video, we're going to show how to work with the Interbotics XS Arm Gazebo ROS package directly. In this case, Gazebo outputs some ROS topics, and you would write a node that would interface with those ROS topics directly. In the second approach, we're going to show how to use MoveIt with Gazebo and explain a little bit about how Gazebo is configured for that to work. So open up a terminal, press Control alt t on your keyboard to do that, and then type ROS launch interbotics access arm gazebo and tab a couple times access arm gazebo dot launch robot model we're going to use the widow x200 DAF, that's the degrees of freedom is five by default it's it's actually five so we don't actually have to set it for this case but um, we might want to get in the habit of doing that because if you are launching a four degree of freedom arm or a six degree of freedom arm you have to set that parameter and then use position controllers is equal to true so there's two options you can put for this there's use position controllers and then there's use trajectory controllers for the position controllers what that does is it creates a ROS control interface to control uh, each joint independently like if a joint is at zero degrees and you want to go to the 1.5 radians, you just command to a certain topic to go 1.5 radians and it'll go there. Um, so that's the way you would write, if you were interfacing with Gazebo directly, you would write a uh, node that would just publish to those different topics. But when you're working with MoveIt, we, we set use trajectory controllers to true because the way MoveIt interfaces with Gazebo is it sends a joint trajectory message which is a list of positions and could be velocities and accelerations that all the joints should be, of where all the joints should be at given moments in time. So that's the second approach, but we're just gonna show this one for now. Use just press enter after writing that. Okay. Now press control shift T in your terminal and type raw service call gazebo unpause physics press enter very important to do that that's going to unpause the physics engine so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a mouse created by 3d connection it looks like this i think it's called space nav and it allows you to um, um, move your arm in gazebo move the viewpoint in gazebo to something that's a little bit better okay something like that looks good definitely recommend it not a sponsor. So now that we did that, let's type Ross topic list. Let's uh, bring that up. So you'll see a few topics that say like Widow X200 elbow controller command or Widow X200 left finger controller command, um, wrist angle controller command, and wrist rotate controller command. These are the topics you want to publish to for uh, positions to command the different positions for each of these joints. So let's just do that very quickly. So let's say I wanted to change the wrist angle position to be negative one radians. I can do Ross topic pub dash one, widow x200, um, wrist angle controller, command, tab, tab, and then we can do negative one and press enter. And we see that it moves to negative one. Now let's move the elbow joint to one radians, just to show how that looks. So Ross topic, well, you can actually press the up arrow key and type and replace wrist angle with elbow. It's one way of doing it. And then change the command to be one and press enter. And finally, let's just rotate the waist because why not? We'll, we'll do that to 0 0.7. Um, and change elbow here to be waist. All right, so that's pretty much how to, you know, work with the arm in Gazebo to direct, uh, by directly interfacing with the topics. Um, in this case also, if you wanted to... Um, you wanted to close the gripper you would actually have to publish to the left and right 
finger controller topics with the same but opposite command. So like the left finger you would command to be I think I think it's between 0 0.015 and 0 0.037 for the left finger and then you would do negative from zero negative 0 0.015 to negative 0 0.037. Uh, for the right finger. So we can show that here. Let's just make this arm swing to face us so we can see the fingers a bit better. Um, so Ross Topic Pub-1 left finger controller and we can do 0 0.037 should be fully open. And we can do the same thing for the right finger controller. And we'll change that to be negative 0.037. So you would want to write those commands though at the same exact time, of course, in your custom node. Now, if you wanted to close it, we can do 0 0.015 for the, oops, um, for the left finger. And zero and negative zero point oh one five for the right finger. Um, so there is a way in in uh, a URDF to make a joint mimic another joint. There's actually a mimic tag you can use. It doesn't really play nice with Gazebo though. You have to install a custom plugin to make the mimic tag work. And for our ROS packages, I decided not to go that route. So. And that's why you you would have to control both the left and right finger controllers directly. Okay, so that's it pretty much for uh, controlling an arm in gazebo directly. So let's control C out of that. Might take a few uh, seconds for, for gazebo to shut itself down because it's such a processor intensive application. All right, there we go. Now let's, uh, let's launch move it with gazebo. So Ross launch. Interbotics, access arm, move it, access arm, move it dot launch, robot model is equal to, let's go with the Widow X250 six off. Um, we're going to set use gazebo to be true and duff is equal to six and press enter. Okay, Arviz might hang until you unpause the physics engine in Gazebo. So you just do that, Ross service, uh, call Gazebo, unpause physics, press enter. And here is Arviz with our Move It plugin for motion planning. Let's minimize that this on the left side of our screen, put this on our right, right side of the screen. And we're gonna zoom in here. I'm using the space nav mouse again. We're just gonna orient the arm so it looks the same way it does and move it. Okay. Great. Now, if you wanted to show the green arm that represents the start state of the robot, you can just go to motion planning, scene robot, um, or sorry, planning request. And you can, you can check the query, uh, query start state. So that'll give you the green robot. Um, and then if you wanted to, um, show the orange robot that represents a goal state, you can just check that. So I'm just gonna have the goal state one checked. Because sometimes if you click both of them, you might end up dragging the, the wrong one. So let's just move um, the arm to be a little bit to the left and go down. It looks pretty good. And let's uh, plan that motion. Looks like it was good and execute it.
Oh. So first what you have to do is that there was an error message saying that the current state is not equal to the start state. So let's just update the start state to be current. Click plan and then click execute. All right, there we go. Now it's not complaining. Um, we can also do random poses. So we can change goal state to be random valid. That looks good. Do plan. And then we can execute it. And we have that message again. So something you want to do before um, executing or before planning really is just to update the start state to be current. Then click plan again. Then execute. Okay. And then we're going to... Let's just do it again just for fun. Random valid. That looks good. Update the start state to be current. And let's plan and execute. All right. You might see a warning here about how the arm controller failed with error goal to tolerance violated. Um, that's just something that movement outputs occasionally, but the actual trajectory will still be executed. Um, so like I was saying before, in this case, if you were to control shift T in the terminal and type ROS topic list, you won't see the widow X 250 S slash, uh, wrist angle controller slash command anymore. Instead, you will see this arm controller follow joint trajectory, um, topics. So that's because when you're using, um, when you're sending a joint trajectory, you only need one topic for that. And I believe that, uh, the topic that movement uses is widow X 250 arm controller follow joint trajectory goal. So if you were to actually, um, let's open up a terminal, press control alt T and let's type Ross topic echo widow X 250 S arm controller. Um, hold on here. Arm controller, follow joint trajectory and then go and press enter. And now let's publish a new goal to move it. So let's just change the goal state to be another random valid. That's actually valid. There we go. Update the current state of the robot to be current and plan and execute. There we go. We'll see what the actual joint trajectory message looks like on this topic. Um, so you can see here is, here are the joint names that are being commanded. Here's the first waypoint, second waypoint, third waypoint, etc. And in this case, we're getting, move it is commanding not just positions, but also velocities and accelerations of, uh, where the joint states should be for that given point in time, where the time from start parameter shows you, um, at what point the, uh, these positions or velocities and accelerations should be reached. Um, something that actually is pretty handy to know is that you have control over how fast the arm should move. So there's something called velocity scaling and acceleration scaling. If you go to the, your uh, Interbotics Ross Manipulators repository, Go to the XSR Move at ROS package, go to Config, and then you can go to Joint Limits, and we're using a 6 off. So here we have some joint limits here, and we specify what the um, max velocity is for all of these joints. Some of that is 2.35 radians per second, um, yeah, pretty much 2.35 radians per second is the max velocity. 
and the max acceleration is 5 radians per second squared. So if you wanted to change that, you can scale it down. So right now, velocity, velocity scaling is set to 1, so this would mean that you then move it can plan to have a max velocity for any given joint of 2.35 radians per second. But if you wanted to slow this down, you could set it to like 0 0.5, for example. And then you can um, update this to be something valid, current, plan, and execute. And you will see that uh, the resulting trajectory will be a little bit slower. Also, something that you will see is that that warning message that appeared about the gold tolerance being violated, now that we lowered the velocity, um, it actually was able to execute successfully. Um, and you can see that there's no, none of those warnings here. Um, and then you can also scale down the acceleration. So if you wanted to do 0 0.25, let's say, you'll see that the, traject the resulting trajectory will be even slower. Um, so if you really needed to make sure your control was very slow and precise, that would be one way of doing it. So you can set up the goal state to be like upright. That's one of the predefined poses you can set. Current. And then plan and execute. You know what? That, that was pretty close to the current position. Let's just do a different one. Like random valid. Don't like that random valid one. Here is a good one. Plan and execute. So in that case, you saw it took much. It took a lot longer to uh, to move the arm because we sl we slowed down the acceleration. Okay, you can also control the gripper using move it. So let's get rid of the. Well, let's let's keep the goal state here. We're going to change this to be interbotics gripper. And the only part of the gripper here is the two fingers. That's, that's what we're moving. And you can set this to be closed and execute it. And uh, kind, of won't, kind of hard to see here because the arm isn't facing us. So that's closed. And now let's open it again. Plan and execute. And we see the gripper is opening. Great. So that's how you can use Gazebo with MoveIt. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm gonna just control C out of MoveIt and Gazebo. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.